Hey everybody, good morning and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at how I would edit your photos, but let's get the housekeeping stuff out of the way that we do every week. So welcome to the um, Photography Masterclass, our Masterclass Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. And if you're watching the replay, thanks for watching the replays. We know that everyone can't catch these live or stick around for the whole thing. So uh, great to have you here if you're live. Great to have you here if you're watching it in the future. Uh, with that said, uh, this is Masterclass Friday. So what that means is that uh, there are masterclasses all day long from the various uh, Adobe Evangelists doing graphic design and Photoshop and um, uh, um, audio video and uh, digital painting and drawing and also Adobe Express. So we have a fun day. Uh, usually this is things that um, the Evangelists get to spend time on and show you their their favorite tips and tricks and workflows uh, that they get to dedicate an hour to. So hang on, I'm just refreshing a window here. Hold on, hold on. I just want to make sure I get this right. And I see some chat. Come, oh, there it is. Okay, I just want to make sure I have the chat coming up in the right window. So I see, speaking of the chat, I see people hanging out, uh, of course, on Behance, which is where Adobe Live takes place. I see Paul Tranny, who just finished. Um, yeah, Paul, I don't know what the, uh, yeah, I did something. Anyway, um, so thanks for joining us and sticking around. If you just came from Paul's stream on compositing uh, with Adobe Firefly. And also, if you're hanging out on Behance, great. If you're hanging out on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Twitch, wherever you might be watching this from. Uh, if you want to participate in the main chat, head over to b.net slash Adobe Live and you can log in with your free Adobe ID and catch it there. Um, but I, I see your questions and things coming in in the other chat as well. It's just I can't always see both windows at the same time. So I see uh, Eric and I see uh, Reggie or Reg and I see David over on Facebook and YouTube and I see all those folks over there and I see Sh uh, Sheila as well. Good morning. But um, I also mainly see Tom and Mike and General Kenobi and, and Frank, Frank and those folks as well. So again, I'll try and look at both chats. If I don't, just either repost your question or head over to b.net slash Adobe Live. All right, without further ado, how today works is I put up a link like Monday ahead of the stream, so last Monday, for people to submit their images. It's too late, you can't do it if you're like, oh, let me submit one now, it's too late. Because <laughs> the cutoff is the day before the stream, the evening before the stream. And so I've got all the images I'm gonna work on today. But people always ask, hey, how can I submit images? You gotta you know, look at my social media the Monday before this topic, and I always post the link to do it. That's how these people submitted theirs. Um, these are image, none of these images are mine. So I'm in a new Lightroom catalog or a Lightroom catalog that I dedicate just for this. And I do them at random. So I, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily know any of these people. Some people submit one photo. Some people submit two photos. Some people submit 10 photos. I won't get to all your photos. This is not me doing your work for you. This is just me looking at some of your photos and taking, um, taking a stab at how I would do it. I may not finish the photo, but I would give you some uh, tips and tricks of how I would, if I had the whole time to work on just that one photo, what I would do next. So there's definitely a photo in here that I won't get to finish because it needs a lot of work. Um, but just, I'll show you what I would do had I, if I had the time. All right, so, with, and I got landscapes, travel, portraits, uh, an old photo that needs restoration, all kinds of stuff. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'll pop over to this catalog so you can see it. And um, again, in no particular order, because I, I don't, like I said, I don't know the people that submitted these sometimes. So let's go ahead and I'm going to start with the landscape. And also some of the images came in in RAW, some of them come in JPEG, doesn't matter to me. Um, but of course, with a RAW image, I have more deep, more data to work with, so I can do a little more with it. But uh, if you submitted a JPEG, that's fine too. All right, so let's start with this one. And this is, uh, I think I went in and made sure it was straight out of the camera. So I, I basically reset it. I think some adjustments had been made, but I hit reset on this one uh, so that it would be just out of the camera and the kinds of things I would do with it. And this, um, just from a, just a tip standpoint, um, 
this is kind of what you're going to get when you go out and shoot landscape in the middle of the day. That's why most people try to do it either early in the morning or after midday so that they can get better light. But that doesn't mean that if you took one of these that you can't do something with it. So let's go ahead and do what we can do with it. So I usually, uh, first and foremost, if it is a raw file, I, and you're going to get tired of me saying this because I do this every single time, I always choose a raw profile to start with. Now you'll see it, and again, this will not pop up for JPEG, so you won't have this option. But if it's a raw file, you'll have the ability to choose Adobe Color, Landscape, Portrait, Standard, Vivid. And then I put in my own from my camera. I've added my own presets here for camera, landscape, and camera portrait. So when it says camera, that's the profile from your camera versus Adobe's generic profile. So let's do Adobe's generic landscape because I don't know what camera he shot this with. And you won't necessarily see a big difference. It's just setting the floor, the groundwork to get going. All right, next up, um, I usually go down and do a quick lens correction. And again, I don't know what this was shot with, so it, it may or may not have the lens information in it. This one did. So it was shot with a uh, Sigma lens and it just corrected some of the bowing and vignetting around the edges just by turning that on. So never hurts to turn that on. The one above it, people usually ask, what's removed chromatic aberration? Chroma chromatic aberration usually happens when um, the sensor had a hard time figuring out some specific light situations. So it will, if you see a purple haze or not haze, but um, uh, like a purple, purplish uh, stroke around parts of the image, that's usually chromatic aberration. And so if you don't have it, it just doesn't do anything. If you have it, it removes it. So turning it on won't hurt. Um, and if you can't see it, it's, you're just doing an extra step for nothing because if you can't see it, then it doesn't matter. But anyway, turn it on, doesn't hurt anything. And let's keep going. All right, so now I uh, always do the next thing, which is I let Lightroom show me what it would do. And then I usually disagree on some things, but it gives me, instead of me having to go through and experiment with each individual slider from scratch, because they're all zeroed out, I usually always hit auto tone. So you'll find this auto tone button in Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, which I'm in, and Camera Raw and on mobile as well. So all versions of Lightroom have it. And it just, it's its letting Lightroom take a shot at or take a crack at what it thinks this photo needs. And it usually gets me, oh, sorry, usually gets me most of the way there. So in this case, uh, this is one of those, I don't agree with some things because it made the foreground a little too dark for me because it tried to balance out how bright the whole photo was. So I may not agree with how, how far it dropped the exposure on this photo, because it dropped it down almost two stops. Um, but it did reduce the highlights, it increased the shadows, it uh, increased the whites, it dropped the blacks down, and it doesn't do usually anything to texture clarity and dehaze. And it did increase the vibrance and increase the saturation. So those are the numbers it gave me I don't always necessarily agree with those numbers. So for example, I definitely don't agree with exposure. So I'll bump the exposure back up just a hair. And uh, maybe instead of two stops, I'll bring it down to a little bit over one stop. Okay, so that to me looks better for this photo. And again, like I said, I don't always agree. So uh, vibrance can go up a little bit more than what it picked. And the thing that it doesn't do that this photo absolutely needs is some dehaze. So I'm going to go ahead and dehaze. Now, again, you can go too far with any slider. So just going to add a little dehaze um, to kind of just tone down some of that middle of the day haze. All right. Now, the, the thing that I can't do in Lightroom that this photo is, is begging for is the sky is gone. It's, it's completely washed out. So it's like this would be the photo if this is all you could do in Lightroom. Um, because even if I said, well, I might be able to bring some of it back here. Let's do, let's try this. Let's try, let's see how far we can get in Lightroom before we move over to Photoshop. Let's say we select the sky, which, uh, uh, which is great. We got an AI based mask that automatically masked the sky. I went over to masking. I click select sky and it did it. Great. And I could, try bringing the exposure of the sky. Nope, that's not going to do anything. <laughs> I could try 
Um, I could try bringing down, bring, making the sky. Yeah, see, there's just no data there. So like it's, it's completely blown out. So I could, I could try and dehaze the sky just some more. And you see it's starting to bring over this one, this one patch of blue over here, but that's basically nothing. So I'm just going to reset this. Oh, I didn't mean to reset the whole image. Hang on. I'm just going to reset this map, delete this mask. Uh, let's delete all my, or delete this mask and let's just get out of the mask because that's just not going to do anything for me. So this is one of those where um, it's, it's, Time to head to Photoshop. Thanks, James. Yeah, uh, James said, nice touch using the identity plate for uh, announcing what we're doing today, but it's more for, so I remember that this is not my catalog. <laughs> this is the catalog, this is the, uh, not my main catalog. This is the one I use for this class. Okay, but anyway, let's, uh, that's it. That's that's pretty much all I would do in, um, in Lightroom. So let's head over to Photoshop. So I'm gonna hit Command E uh on pc that would be Control e and notice it didn't bring up any dialog box it just popped over to photoshop and just did it that's because that is a raw file so it it brings over a copy automatically i don't have to worry about making a copy i don't have to worry about duplicating the layer i don't have to worry about any of that because there's a copy the original is still in lightroom so this copy i can do anything i want to and it's not going to affect the original. So if you're always duplicating the background when you first jump into Photoshop to get to just so you have a safety net, my safety net is back in Lightroom. It's the original. So I don't worry about that. But anyway, let's let's go in here to do what we came here to do and that's simply replace the sky. And when I go up to sky replacement, uh, Photoshop will automatically bring it over to another window. It'll automatically figure out what the sky is and uh, replace it with the last used sky. So it's not guessing which sky works best. It's simply using the one you use last. So that may or may not work for this image. Um, and when you pop down to choices, I wanna just remind you that all of, um, did I not put these in a folder? Anyway, all of the skies that, uh, blue sky, spectacular, sunsets, those are all Adobe skies. So if I choose blue skies and I just make it just a nice generic blue sky, um, that that will give me the blue sky from Adobe. So the question becomes, and this is why I asked, that's why I'm pointing this out. If you use one of Adobe skies, they're there for you to use. They're, that's what they're here for. And that's a nice one actually for this one. That's not your sky. That's you know, a stock sky. You have the rights to use it. But then when you say this is my image, technically it's not all your image the foreground your image but the sky is someone else so what i recommend is that you start shooting your own sky so all of these ones below which should be in that folder for one, for whatever reason when i imported them they didn't go into folder can i drag them in yeah i can drag them into the folder okay so let's uh let's select all of these let's put them in the folder because these are my skies there we go so you can create your own folder. You can add your own sky. So it, it will go out and you can go. So I have a folder called TW Skies for this demo. But anyway, uh, just start shooting skies. Um, it will let you bring in your JPEG versions of your skies. And uh, now it lets you bring in more than one at a time, which was a pain before. And then you can then if you composite your sky in there, it's still your image. It's not the sky that was at that day in that location necessarily, but the image is still 100% yours because your sky, your foreground. So whatever sky I pick, um, just remember that just because it's a beautiful sky doesn't mean it matches the foreground. So you could get into a situation where you're picking something that looks dramatic and cool and all that, but it doesn't really look right for the scene you're replacing it in because it doesn't look like that sky was there that day. And also um, you can um, you can move the sky around as well. So if the sky doesn't, yeah, there we go. So if the sky isn't positioned properly for you, you can drag it around and kind of get uh, a better feel for how this will look. So uh, keep in mind, if your, your sky is usually gonna be bigger than the, the sky that's in the original image. 
All right, you also have some adjustments here you can make as well. So if you need to warm that, warm that up or cool it down, actually, I kind of like that. You can do that. Um, you have some adjustments if the mask isn't quite right you can fade you can fade the edge uh, you can shift the edge as well so if it didn't select it just right you can do that you can also get into the foreground adjustments so it automatically tries to make the foreground look like the sky and if it's not doing that properly you have some sliders here as well that you can adjust oh i moved the sky over too far there we go ooh, 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 ooh. there we go don't want my sky to be cut off all right, and you got some color adjustments as well. So you can uh, play with the color adjustment that it's doing to the foreground. Again, it's trying to match the sky you pick. That's what all of this bottom part is. So if you pick a sky, you'll notice your foreground gets adjusted as well. All right. Um... <laughs> TW Sky sounds like a uh, part of an airline advertisement tagline. Okay, uh, I'll start my own airlines. Now, the best part about all of this is it outputs it as a new layer, a new set of layers. Uh, so a new layer group. So when I click OK, that whole thing became this layer group. And if I decide to go back to the original, I just turn it off. If I decide to run a different sky, I can again go here, choose um, uh, sky replacement once again, and pick a whole different set of sky or a different set of options, a different sky. So let's go back to... Uh, the blue sky is one here, and let's go to maybe that. Yeah, see, I don't like any of these for this. Uh, let's go back to this one again. That one kind of works. It just, I don't like, I just don't like it against the foreground. So let's try something else. Let's try spectacular. And maybe that. Yeah, see, that looks more real for this scene um, to me. But again, you pick the one you want. Yeah, see, that doesn't look right. And sunsets definitely won't look right because this wasn't a sunset. Yeah, see, that doesn't look right at all. Okay, so keep it in mind, it, it should look right. <laughs> when you're done, it should look, look, oh, here, let me go back to my skies. It should look more like what was happening that day. And maybe I just don't have a sky that was taken in the middle of a middle of a sunny day in the middle of a field. Uh, so that's why mine don't look right. But keep that in mind that if you're matching this, you, you kind of want it to look like that would have been the sky for that day. It's just a better sky than the one that was there. OK, um, so once I click OK again, that gives me a whole new set uh, or layer layer set that I can work on. I can choose between which one. And I think I like. Not both of them. I think I like the first one better. All right, so if that's the one I like better, I can pitch the other one to save space. I can save it. Now that's saving behind my head there. And um, if I switch over to the right there, you'll see the progress bar. So that's saving a layered Photoshop file because that's what I set my Lightroom Classic preference to so that it gives me uh, a layered Photoshop file as opposed to a layered TIFF. Um, I've looked at clouds both sides now, from both sides now. Uh, I'm not sure if I get that reference. All right, so I saved it, close it, and uh, now if I head back over to Lightroom Classic, uh, it is, that's the new image. So um, that's my take on that one. So if we go back to this one and we reset it back to the original, this is where we started, and this is where we ended up. And I, I, I could go in and I might use an adjustment brush on the mountains to kind of like, like dehaze those specific areas a little bit more because foreground looks good. The mountains themselves still look a little too hazy. So let me quickly do that. Uh, let me go back in and go into masking. And I'm just going to use an adjustment brush. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint this area. And again, take your time, zoom in, do it right, auto mask it if you need to. And yeah, because I just overspilled a lot. But anyway, once I do that, um, ooh, and I can even try my intersect trick. So let's say intersect with select objects. So let's make that a rectangle. And people were really liking the intersect feature when I showed this. Uh, when I showed about masking. And yeah, see that got rid of the spill that I did. Okay, so now that I did that, uh, let's go ahead and do D 
the haze. And yeah, just kind of toning the mountains down a little bit more. So that's too much, obviously. That's not enough, and I didn't brush enough, but I could go back in and brush some more up closer to the top. And that will just tone that down a bit as opposed to it looks a little hazy at zero. So just bringing, bringing up the dehaze for the mountain area just enough. Okay, so now that's the image I would prefer compared to that one. Next up, let's go to our next one. Uh, that's this one. And right off the bat, uh, one of the things I always check for, because it looks about right, but I can't tell, is that horizon straight. I, I, it looks right, but I, again, I want to check to make sure before I do anything else. So we head over to the crop tool, we grab the angle tool, and we drag the angle along the shoreline just to make sure that it's straight. And again, it looks straight. Eh, it tilted a little bit. Okay. Because it, it, it did look a slight bit off to me, but that was just my eye. All right. And, or actually, it wasn't my eye. <laughs> it was slightly off. Anyway, uh, let's go in now and do the things we do. So let's see. This is a JPEG, so there's no... Um, there's no camera profile to pick from. Uh, so therefore lens corrections may or may not be there if, if the data is not there from the lens and it's not, so that's okay. Let's go back to the basic and let's do the auto. And I, yeah, I brought out the detail in the middle right off the bat just by doing auto. So there's before and here, let me click in this area and let me do auto. And just bringing out that little bit of detail made a big difference right off the bat. Now, again, I don't always agree with the sliders that it chooses, but it gets me it gets me most of the way there. So I might go in and adjust, bring the shadows out just a little bit more for this scene because I don't think it pushed them far enough. And the other thing that's kind of, and again, this is just personal preference. You've given equal equal space, and again, this is a this is a compositing preference. This is nothing wrong. This is a composition thing. You've given equal preference to the sky and the water, and again, that could absolutely be done on purpose. That may be the way you wanted it, but I tend to want to give the bulk of the composition to the thing that looks the best, or the most dramatic, or the most thing that stands out. Once we get past the reflection, there's nothing special about this water. But the sky's got some nice cloud pattern in it. So what I might do, again, if it were me, and it is, I'm going to go, oh, hang on. I always do that because I'm in the wrong app. app. This, this always throws me because in Lightroom, crop is the letter C. In Lightroom Classic, it's the letter R. So I'm always hitting C in Lightroom Classic by mistake because that gives me compare. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to make sure the uh, aspect ratio is unconstrained. It also shows me the tilt that it did. That's fine. I'm just going to pull this up a little bit to about there. And again, that's just my personal preference. There's nothing wrong with what you did. But as a personal composition trick, I like to do the thing that's like, so if the water was spectacular, then I would crop the sky down. If the sky is spectacular, then I crop the water. If they're both equal, then I would leave it centered like you did it. All right. Um, there's really not a whole lot more I would do to this. This is kind of maybe look at the exposure, the overall exposure. I kind of like the moody look of it, but maybe slightly brighter. That's about it. And also I would check the noise because this is a JPEG, so I can see the noise uh, from a distance. So let's go into the detail. And let's go into noise reduction and just kind of tone down some of that noise. Oh, and also since we, since this is a, uh, it's not a person, we can go in and maybe bump up the texture. And so see this, let's look at our before and after. Texture brings out the details in the build, especially after you um, add it no denoise, because denoise is going to soften up the edges because that's the way noise works. Removing noise works, and adding some of that detail back in with texture can help. You can also try clarity, which is also going to adjust midtones and um, shadows as well, shadows and highlights as well. But 
right about there. That's it. So that's what I would do to this photo. So that was just literally a all Lightroom adjustment. So that's where we started. Look at the difference. This is where we started and this is where we ended up. So just bringing out the details of that photo in the background to really show what's there because otherwise it's just, eh, I can kind of see some stuff there in the shadows, but uh, yeah, there we go. So, and I'm hitting the backslash key to do before and after. It's not showing the before and after the crop, but it is showing before and after all the adjustments. So that's my take on that. All right, here's the one that's a little challenging. It's challenging because there, there are some things that need to be fixed in this photo that are not going to be easy to fix. So it's just because just it's not that it's going to be easy or hard. It's time consuming. And believe it or not, the shadow isn't the most time consuming thing. It's really the curtains. The curtains need a lot of work in this photo and um, more time than I have for this. But let me show you the difference. Uh, let's first of all fix the obvious. Uh, the obvious is the white balance is way off because it's, it's like the whole thing's kind of sepia tone. So let's go to develop. Let's click the white balance eyedropper. We would typically click on something that is supposed to be uh, around 18% gray. If you don't have anything that's 18% gray, then you will look for something that should be black or something that should be white. So his pants, I'm assuming, should be black. And if, you, if you're guessing wrong, you can. that's the nice thing I like about Lightroom Classic. You can see the preview in the upper left corner before you click. So if I point at the jacket, point at the uh, gown, point at the curtains, the curtains are the wrong one because that's throwing the whole thing off. I point at the floor, that's the wrong one. It's throwing the whole thing off. So I would click right on his pants. And that kind of fixes the white balance. Now, the other thing you might decide is, is the color worth keeping? Meaning it's a color photo, um, but would it look better in black and white? So you can always make that choice after the fact. So you can have a black and white version, a color version, whatever. But just keep in mind that uh, just because it's in color doesn't mean it needs to be in color. Because so, if the color doesn't look good, then why not try black and white? All right, so let's go through our normal things. It's a JPEG, so we don't have a profile. We probably don't have a uh, lens correction either. Uh, nope, because it's just an old photo, so it might have been a scan. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit auto. Let's see what Lightroom would do with it. And yeah, Lightroom brightened it up. I kind of like that. I really don't disagree with much of anything. In this particular case, I'm good with that. So sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you're good. Now, what's these what's these triangles up here meaning? So on the left-hand side, this, this blue or whatever color this is turning means that there's some clipping in the shadows. That means some of the shadow areas have completely filled in. So as I'm hovering over that, it would show me a blue highlight and I don't even see it. Like I'm not seeing where it is, so I'm not worried about it. Same thing for the highlights. This would mean areas of the photo have gone, turned completely white. There's no detail in the area of the photo at all. And again, it's not enough to where I can even see it. All right, so I'm not worried about that, fixing that right now because it's just not enough to worry about. And now let's go in and do the hard things. Those were the easy parts. <laughs> let's, go, let's go take a look at the hard stuff. So I'm gonna uh, head over to Photoshop. Now, because it is a JPEG, it's gonna bring, ask me a question. Remember on the raw file, just open, JPEG's gonna say, hey, do you want to make a copy of this? Or do you wanna edit the original? I almost never edit the original. There's one or two cases where I might do it, but for the most part, you're gonna say edit a copy because you want that safety net. You want the original to be in Lightroom untouched or just with non-destructive edits. Then you want the, um, uh, you want the, uh, copy to head over to Photoshop. So I'm going to say yes, definitely edit a copy with the adjustments I've already made so far. Here's the copy that came over. <sighs> All right, like which problem do I start with first? Um, for, well, actually, before I even start with any of that, what I want what I want Photoshop to do is I want to try the neural filter for um, for working with old photos. So filter um, neural filters. And let's head over to photo restoration. So photo restoration 
is a Neurofilter in beta. So that means it's not done yet. It's not ready yet. You can try it out. I'm going to say yes, try it out. And I notice right off the bat, they, they don't turn on scratch reduction. So I usually just go ahead and crank that right up. And I also crank up the photo enhancement. And you could wait for it first to see what it does and then crank it up. But I usually crank it up first and then turn it down if I don't like it. So it's having to reprocess because I moved those two sliders. And we'll let it process. And I'm looking at the original here. And look at that. Look at that. Look how much better that looks right off the bat. It almost looks dreamy like a wedding day. So um, it didn't fix our, our biggest problem, but uh, you know, stuff up here. But it did like just make the overall photo look better. So the nice part about this is you can output this to the current layer, but I recommend uh, making a new layer with it because if you make a new layer with it, then you're, you're protected, you have your original. This way, uh, in case it missed something or did something weird, you would have the copy that you didn't notice right away, you'd have the copy to work with. All right, so let's go ahead and say, yep, make a new layer with that filter. Great, so here's the original. Oh, 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 see? I didn't notice what it did to her uh, her flowers there. So yeah, that's why we made a copy because that we need her flowers back. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna say, hey, the flowers are on the original. I want the flowers back, everything else. It's also kind of taking out some of the detail in the dress. So I might go, I might throw that away and run it again and not do so much of an enhancement because that's what it's telling me it's like you did too much filter photo restoration let's do the scratch thing and let's leave the photo enhancement where it was all right let's see if we get a better result this time because I, I was going to start trying to fix it but then i noticed other things so it might, it's just easier to run it again Oh, it still got rid of her flowers. Um, let me pull that back down a bit. Let's see what that does. Also, don't want to lose the detail in the dress itself. Nope, not enough. It's starting to bring it back. All right, what if I just turn that off? And okay, turn this down. Maybe it's thinking those are scratches. If I have to turn it all the way down, then I'm just, yes, yeah, okay, that brought it back. That brought back some of it. Let's turn it down one more time. That should do enough. That should be enough. Because I was going to say, if I turned it all the way down, then the, the, basically the filter didn't really do anything I needed. So it is trial and error. Maybe turn this down and turn the photo enhancement back up and see what we get. Because I think it's the scratch reduction that's removing the flowers. It thinks those are scratches for some reason. And that is the problem with AI. Is new layer mask an option? Yes, it is. All right, let's turn this all the way down to where it starts and let's see what it does. Yeah, that's probably the best balance between these. Okay, so someone asked, is new layer with a mask an option? Uh, new layer mast is an option. So that will give me uh, the new layer with, but yeah, see it just added over just a blank mask. So I'm not sure if that really did anything. Hang on. Yeah, that, that's interesting mask, that's what it did. But anyway. Um, that is where we are. So now let's go in and continue working on the other areas. So I, I kind of like the enhancements that it made, especially to their faces. That looks good. Uh, you could go in and mask again, create a work with that layer of mask and bring back the flower detail exactly the way it was. So I could go in here, for example, I could go to a black brush. And if I start painting with that black brush, yeah, so I can bring back in uh, the, the details in those flowers if I wanted to and that would do that um, here let me show you zoom in so that's bringing back in the detail of those flowers and it just depends on um, how much of that you care about and want to bring back 
Okay, great. Now let's talk. Let's tackle the big areas because those are minor tweaks. You can work on those as much as you want. So one thing I notice is that I notice something right here on his pants. Let me go back to that layer. Let's quickly get rid of that. It may seem like I'm avoiding the big shadow in the room, and I am. I'm just like going and working on other stuff while while I work on while I work anyway. Um, all right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a composite. Command, Option, Shift, E, PC, Control, Alt, Shift, E. That'll make a composite of everything onto a new layer. And I'm going to call this layer uh, Working. And I'm going to turn off the original layers. Okay, so now we have this new composite layer we can go in and we can play with. And we can uh, certainly, now we can definitely start removing things that are egregious in this photo. And it will start doing that. Um, how do I take care of the shadow? This the shadow that's on her dress that's really bugging me. <sighs> the problem with the shadow is that we can't just replace it with white because there's some detail in the shadow or in the shadow itself. And matter of fact, some of this got distorted because that doesn't even look right. And that might have been distorted by the filter. So let me go look at that for a second. Yeah, it's, it wasn't great to begin with. The, the filter toned it down, but it still wasn't great. All right, so we've got some things to work with. So one of the easiest ways to do this, and I thought about this after I saw this image when it first popped in. Um, let's go in and try a clone trick. So I'm going to use the clone stamp tool. I'm going to bring my brush down size down a bit. I'm going to set the clone stamp to a blend mode called lighten. So that way, if I clone the dress onto the shadow, it will only affect the pixels that are that are darker than the area I sample. Does that make sense? That's what lighten does. It lightens the area based on the area you sample. I'm going to grab my pen for this. Hold down my option or alt key click and then come down here and start brushing now it may be too bright so and it could be so what i would do instead is just lower the opacity of that a bit so that it's also not as bright there we go and i'll blend it in later i'm not worried about the edge i'm just trying to get this giant part of the shadow taken care of All right, now that's about as much as I'm going to get out of that first pass. Now I'm going to come over here to the um, the seam, the, the crease or whatever that is. And I'm going to start right on the crease and click, option click. And then it, you can see it lining up as I move um, my cursor. So that way I can keep it lined up and it's already on lighten. And then I can go into these areas as well. Now, again, I'm not worried about the edges. I'll fix the edges after I'm done. But that's going to take care of a lot of it. Okay. Same thing. I'm going to come over here. Start up here. Click. Come down here. Make sure it stays lined up. And it won't be perfect because I'm kind of going through this quickly, but I'm just giving you an idea of a way to take care of the shadow. All right, now, same thing for the, the pattern that's on the floor. So I'm going to come over here to this side, click, and just start lightening that pattern up and also repairing the pattern that was seemingly damaged somehow in the original same thing over here maybe pick this one kind of paint that back in but paint it in lighter now the problem is going to be where they join so you might have to use this one and just kind of put some of that back 
and then we come back up here. And we just keep working. All right. So now we, we took care of bulk of it, but we can see patches of white that don't, they're like different shades of white that don't line up. So now that we got that done, we can go into our patch tool and kind of blend in those edges. That's why I said I wasn't worried about the way the edges looked because I'm going to patch them anyway. And using the patch tool, I'm just kind of blending these edges in that I painted that look like overlays of patch tool or overlays of clone stamp. And then you got some damage over here. Now I could try patching that to see what that does. Not bad. And so this is just going to be one of those, it's just going to take you time to do it. But, and I would go get again, keep cloning closer to the edge, but this is before and that's after. So got rid of a lot of it that way. Yeah, and you can also rotate the angle of the um, of the clone stamp tool. So you can, I forgot the key for that, but there's an, there's a, I think it's option shift or there's a, there's a way to angle your uh, clone stamp so you can turn it to match as it turns around, as it goes around the bottom of the dress. Okay, um, and believe it or not, that's not the hard part. <laughs> like that may, that's just time consuming. So you go in and keep working it and get down on the bottom here and clean up the edges a little bit more. But, and again, we, we came a long way just in a few minutes, but the, these drapes are, are horrendous. Like this is the problem because there's like, this looks all patched already. There's like spots on the photo. There's just all kinds. This is a tear or a spot on the photo. There's just all kinds of things going on in this curtain. This looks like the photo started to bubble up, you know, this plastic overlays on top of old photos. Looks like it bubbled up there. So there's all kinds of issues in these curtains. And unfortunately, I was like, oh, I'll just select a couple and replace the background with something else. And the veil, this makes it a difficult selection to, to do. It's transparent here. And so it, it just depends on what you want to spend time doing. If you want to spend time fixing the curtain. You want to spend time replacing the curtain by getting a good selection of her. It's up to you. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a couple of things to fix the curtain. Uh, let's let's uh, use the patch tool and try and patch out that, that bubble. Let's just at least start with that. And remember my clone stamp lighten trick. You could also use darken. So if you need to darken up this area up here, then you could go to your clone stamp stamp you can switch the mode from lighten to uh, darken and it would do the same thing so it would allow you to go in clone stamp uh, like the middle of the curtain there and it will just use that same color to darken that that top part so that they can blend it in better okay now you you might be saying well terry how are you going to do all of that like that that's a mess this the side you're working on is pretty easy I'm working on this side for a reason. Because if I get this side right, then I can go in and use it for the other side. So I'm just, that's why I'm, I'm taking the, the approach of what's the easiest side to fix. And maybe I can use that side later on the other side. So this side now is looking pretty good. This side is horrendous. So what I'm going to do is grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to select this side as much as I can. Like up to maybe right there. I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate it onto its own layer. So now it's on its own layer all by itself. There it is. And then I'm going to go in and um, free transform it because I need to flip it over because of the way the curtain's like the curtain's going like that. And so we'll flip it over, flip it horizontally, and then we'll move it over here. All right. See, that <laughs> saves me a lot of time because I don't have to worry about it. Now I just have to blend it in. All right, so um, I'll go ahead and uh, lock in the free transform. And I still would have to fix like one or two areas here or maybe duplicate those areas from another part of the curtain. Maybe duplicate this this one onto this one. But anyway, I, I got a bulk of that fixed without having to fix it. All right, so now let's go in and just simply uh, use uh, maybe hue and saturation 
And let's go in and maybe adjust the hue of that. Oh, hang on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And we want to lock it down so it's only affecting the layer below. So I held on the Option key and click between the two layers. So it's only affecting the one underneath. Let's reduce the saturation of that a bit. Kind of blend that in a little bit more. Maybe something close to that. And then I could do the same thing. I could just patch this area right here to make that blend in better. But I think at this point, you, you get the idea of what things you can do to make this photo better. So this is where I'm going to stop because, again, I'm almost out of time. Like I only got like 15 minutes left total uh, before the next stream. So I could spend more time on this photo. But you get the idea. We came a long way from, um, from that just in a few seconds to that. All right, so we'll save that as a work in progress. That will save it with all the layers. Save it as a PSD. Return that PSD back to Lightroom. And <clears throat> so remember I said there's only a couple times where I would say edit original as opposed to edit a copy. If I go back to Lightroom now, and so here's our, um, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's our before, and that's not even the before before. Hang on, let's go here, let's reset it. There we go. There's our before and there's our after so far. But if I wanted to go back into Photoshop and keep working on this because I'm not done, like the floor needs stuff, there's all kinds of stuff that still needs to be done. Then I would, this is the time where I would say Command E and I would say edit the original because I wanna, I wanna work on that original PSD with all the layers. If you say edit a copy again, it's gonna make a new copy without the layers. So that's the one time, one of those maybe one or two times where I do say edit original, when it's a work in progress, I wanna return back to Photoshop with the layers and everything intact to keep working because I already got the original copy. All right, all right, so that's, that's again, that's our before, that's our after, big difference. I, I'd be happy if you just ended there, but there's more you can do if you got time. Next up. <clears throat> this castle or castle church or church probably but this looks like uh it's a cool building it looks like a cool a cool spot to photograph so what am i going to do here let's go in and this is a raw file so i got some things to play with i'm going to say that i want this to be adobe i could do adobe landscape yeah i can do that and i'm going to go ahead and do lens corrections on it and I'm going to go into my um, basic panel. I'm going to hit auto. And again, this is where I don't agree. I don't think it should be that bright. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. And I'm definitely, this picture is definitely begging for um, transform auto upright. There we go. So see the difference? Kind of the, the buildings are leaning back. The columns are leaning back a little bit. That auto upright straightens them up and just makes it look better. And even if it's cropping off that sign, it's okay. You couldn't see all of it anyway. So when I see something like that, I would have cropped it anyway, and I still will crop it because now that I've done auto upright, you, you can see even less of it. So I would hit crop and I would probably bring this one in a little bit and bring this one a little bit because that stuff on the side is useless. All right, next up, um, I would go into detail. Um, I would go back to basic and I would add definitely some texture to this. Uh, by the way, this is what, this is the difference. Oh, this got some noise too. So this is no texture. That's texture. And it's got noise cause it's probably shot low light. Let's see. Yeah. ISO 6400. So yeah, it's going to have some noise. So let's go into detail and let's add a little noise reduction there to kind of just kind of soften that up a little bit. Now, again, the noise doesn't bother me on stones, but I'm gonna just add a little bit of noise reduction for the people that are noise triggered. Uh, let's go ahead and do texture. And again, that's gonna accentuate the noise, but I'm okay with that because it is what it is. Um, yeah, again, that's not a level of noise that really bothers me, but if it is just add, bothers you, add more noise reduction. I'm okay with it. I can add a little bit of vibrance for those colors in the background. And let's see my shadow. So see, this is what I meant by the blue shadow areas. 
those areas are being clipped and I can see them. So I would pull this area up a little bit. Now you can pull it all the way over, that's too far, but you can kind of reduce some of that clipping almost to nothing. So even though it's still white, there's not enough of it anymore to make a difference. So I can even bring it down a little bit more. And yeah, now it's not, it's not happening in areas that matter. Same thing over here on the, um, the highlights. So yeah, yeah, the highlights happening in that window back there, don't care. And we'll leave that the way it is. And that's kind of it. Like, um, yeah, so before, that's where we started. After. And again, the only thing I would maybe tweak is the noise reduction. That's, I, I'm good with this. All right, next up, we have a portrait. See, we got like five minutes left to do this. Again, not a lot to do. Um, so same thing. This is a JPEG. So let's continue on. Develop. And let's uh, auto-tone it. Yeah, okay. Shadow clipping in her hair. So let's pull that out a little bit. Bring up the shadows a little bit more. And again, it's not, it's not critical. Like it's not some detail that matters. It's just shadows in her hair. That's okay. And I don't know. She looks good. <laughs> There's nothing, nothing else that I would tweak. Uh, I would reduce saturation because I don't like where saturation does to skin. I would put saturation back down to zero. Vibrance is okay because vibrance usually doesn't affect skin nearly as much. It brings out the green in her, her clothes there. Good. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not a whole lot more I would do. Just fix the lighting a little bit. That's it. All right, moving on. Oh, 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 oh. One more thing, one more thing. There's one more thing I would do. And this is one thing I forget with people. Um, in my presets, I've got a user preset. Do I still have my user presets? Because I'm often... Oh, I may not have it in this, this version of Lightroom. All right, I'm going to go to my presets, manage presets. I'm going to go to, um, yeah, classic presets. And I'm going to turn on general. These are got turned off a few, several versions back by on purpose because they're trying to make better presets. But I'm going to turn these back on, the general ones because there's one thing in there I like. So when I turn those back on and I go to, um, I go to general, cl classic general, there is sharpen faces. So that preset is not on by default anymore. The reason I like this preset is because when you turn it on, I don't wanna sharpen her skin, but I do wanna sharpen details like her eyes, her teeth, jewelry, anything like that. So when you turn that on, it automatically uses a mask. Hang on, let me, there we go, masking. And so if I turn the mask up, everything that's white is being sharpened. Everything that's dark is not being sharpened. So I would turn this, down, turn this up a little bit to where it's not sharpening anything that's skin related and it's just sharpening her eyes, her teeth, jewelry, hair, things like that. So now if I turn up the sharpening, and here, let me see if I can zoom in and see it. That's down, that's up. It's not affecting the skin, but it is affecting the areas that I would want to be sharper. So just a small little detail that brings out, makes the photos pop a little bit more. Um, would you white balance the orange hue? You're seeing an orange hue because of the way this monitor setup it's not that orange to me but yes i would if, if so the question was you're seeing a slight orange on her skin that i don't see and i wouldn't have even noticed unless you said it and i looked over at your monitor so what i would do is um just bring down the temperature of that a little bit let's see if that affects yours enough yeah i'd white balance it so that you're not seeing orange but i'm not seeing it so that's why um, but yes, if, if I was seeing it on my final copy, I would absolutely do that. All right. That's what I would do. And I don't think we have time for this one, but let's see. Let's run through some things quickly. Uh, develop. 
and details and nope not details lens correction that's already on great and let's do landscape great and let's do auto great and then let's fix the horizon horizons matter and then the same thing um, what's more what's more beautiful the scan sand or sky I'll say the, the sky is, so I maybe crop a little of that foreground out. And then from there, maybe add a little bit of dehaze, because I haven't met a photo yet that dehaze wouldn't make look better. That's it. All right. So someone says, I may have missed this, but why do you prefer Lightroom Classic? Um, because it has more features than Lightroom if that's what you're comparing it to. If you're comparing it to Photoshop, because Photoshop doesn't manage photos, Lightroom does. So it depends on what you're comparing it to. All right, uh, hopefully you got something out of this and we are at time. So cheers, thanks everyone, thanks for the submissions. These are always great. I have more submissions that I didn't get to, so they'll be, at the, they'll be sprinkled into the top of the next one of these I do, so that your photos, even though I don't get to them the week that you submitted them, I usually get to them. Uh, so with that said, cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye, everybody.